This is a film about new technology in the context of a developing country. Who are the different actors in this story and what role do they play? We'll be examining the controversial and complex example of BT cotton in India. GM seeds are transforming Indian cotton farming. But many believe this new technology has only added to India's farming crisis. Is BT cotton a viable technology for a developing country like India? We're in a district called Yavatmal, situated in the state of Maharashtra in central southern India. There are 120 million farmer households in India, many of them living in remote villages like this. 80% are small and marginal farmers who are mostly dependent on rain-fed cultivation. There is often limited access to basic amenities like electricity and water. 85 million households have no insurance if a crop fails. In recent years, Yavatmal has become the epicenter of a suicide crisis that has rocked India's agricultural community. According to government statistics, nearly 300,000 farmers have killed themselves since 1995. Many farmers commit suicide by consuming the pesticide they use on their own land. In this district alone, there have been more than 600 deaths in eight months. This is Anju. Six years ago, her husband Golkadas killed himself. Anju has a son and a daughter, both at school. Her mother-in-law suffers from asthma and needs regular medical attention. The family now lives in a space provided by Anju's brother, a three-room structure that sits on top of a local drain. Golkadas's suicide came out of the blue for this farming family. At the Mumbai office of broadsheet newspaper DNA, farmer distress is a familiar subject. Assistant editor Yogesh Pawar has been investigating the suicides in Yavatmal since 2003. I began to hear of this story where people, people told me of suicides happening. And initially I began to think that it was only uh, because of financial distress, people borrowing money from money lenders and that leading to distress, which is why they were committing suicide. And then I found one common thread 
with almost all the suicide cases that one went, families with that one visited, and that was BT cotton. And it's not like farmer suicides were not happening before that, but you see a spike. And then from then on, the figures have continuously been on the rise. BT cotton was first introduced to India in the late 1990s. This genetically modified crop known as Bolgard is designed to combat the bollworm, a major pest capable of destroying cotton crops. It's been a controversial technology. Overall, there has been some increase in yields, especially in the early years, and that's led to lifestyle transformations. But the upfront investment needed to grow BT cotton has resulted in a cycle of debt for many farmers. There have been questions raised about the possible ecological impact of the pesticides and fertilizers needed to care for this crop. multinational corporation Monsanto is responsible for developing the Bolgar technology. Monsanto is an agriculture company. Uh, we believe in technologies which are sustainable in nature. What we're trying to do around the world is develop seed and identify technology which complement the seed and help farmer produce more, conserve resources and improve life. That's our primary business. But Monsanto couldn't do it alone. It had the technology but it didn't have the local knowledge. Most importantly, Monsanto didn't have the seed required to contain the BT gene. The international agriculture company partnered up with Indian seed giant Mexico. In 2002, after several years of field tests, Monsanto's patented BT Bolgard became the first biotech crop technology to be approved for commercialization by India's Genetic Engineering Approval Committee. Monsanto's BT technology was given the green light for sale in India. Sub-licenses were awarded to a handful of hybrid seed companies across the country. Hybrid seed producers like Anka Seeds in Nagpur became responsible for making and selling seeds containing the BT gene. We are the producer and we are the seller. So we are the one who is producing it and reaching it or making it available for the farmer. High yielding seeds are a legacy of India's green revolution, a period of modernization in agriculture that dates back to the 1960s. As a specialist in cross-pollination techniques, Anko is able to introduce the Bolgard technology into its own germplasm in order to produce hybrid seed varieties that contain the BT gene. Back in 2002, it was this capability that enabled Monsanto to establish its technology with the aim to overhaul cotton farming in India. We believed India is a market where millions of farmers are suffering. Uh, they're losing their yield year after year because they're not able to effectively manage bollworm and we had a technology So we said let's go to Indian farmer work with the Indian partner and try to make available this technology to Indian farmer For sub licensees like Anka, this was a step into the future Using their own hybrid seed varieties These companies were now able to deliver the latest seed innovation to farmers across India We want better technology so if Monsanto is giving, definitely we will go to them and get it. Because unless I have a good technology, my customer is not going to purchase my seed. Hybrid seed varieties containing Bolgard were dispatched to outlets throughout India. A marketing campaign for the new technology included promotions by high profile personalities Film star Nana Pataka travelled across the country in support of the BT cotton campaign. It started with putting out these hoardings and posters and banners everywhere. And then followed by that there was this huge uh, blitzkrieg where you kind of took um, this star, Nana Pataka. He was taken there on a whirlwind tour. There'd be a buffet set up and farmers would come, they would eat there and there would be um, film music played there. 
Word spread fast. Within 10 years, around 95% of cotton farming in India was BT. India adopted this major new technology at breakneck speed. We asked ahead of Monsanto India to explain the structure that was put in place to educate farmers about BT cotton. We did have a strategy. I said, look, we worked and we had an education plan. But I, 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 one thing I can tell you, look, uh, while our farmers in India may not be literate, they might, they might not have gone to get a university degree, but they are very smart. And so see, the other beauty of these technologies are they're very simple. When you put a gene inside a plant, basically you don't have to do anything. All it did, it was helping uh, a plant control bullworms on their own. So simplicity of the technology actually made it very easy for, for us to communicate to the farmers and also for farmers to adopt. How simple was BT cotton technology? According to Yavatmal's district collector, a state government appointed official, mistakes were made when it came to educating cotton growers about what to expect. I suppose the question is, did that information get out to enough farmers in order to be useful and productive? <laughs> Actually not. They're not getting proper information. Farmers are not getting proper information about uh, the possible outcome, possible side effects, possible uh, input-output ratio of the crop. They are not uh, educated enough about this aspect. Whose responsibility is it to educate the farmers about which seeds to buy? Actually, it's a work of agriculture extension program. And uh, agri agriculture extension program and uh, basically it's an individual responsibility also. And on uh, government side, uh, there are certain government department, agriculture department, which needs to give a proper uh, information. This official view that farmers lacked basic information is supported by experiences from the time. Bharti lives in a village called Saikira. She came to Yavatmal district when she married Pradeep 13 years ago. Bharti remembers the challenges her family faced during the changeover period to BT cotton. BT का कैसा था कि बहुत उन्होंने बताया कि BT का पास लगाने के बाद में इतना उत्पन्न उससे तैयार होने वाला है लेकिन यह नहीं बताया कि BT के पीछे खर्चा कितना अपने को आने वाला है जैसा BT से मिलता नहीं मिलता है ऐसा लेकिन BT के पीछे लगाने के लिए भी बहुत पैसा होना हर टाइम पर उसको रेगुलर जो टाइम पर जो चीज उसको होना खत होना उसको पानी होना वो टाइम पर हम गरीबों के पास वो चीज नहीं मिलती ना फिर वो टाइम निकल गए पे बीटी जितना उत्पादन देने का उतना बीटी उत्पादन नहीं देती There was lots to learn about BT cotton, much of it cost related. When they were first introduced, seeds containing Bulgard were priced at around four to five times more than previous varieties. BT seeds can only be used once. And there were those other expenses associated with the new technology. These costs and some complications connected with growing BT cotton came as a shock to many farmers. When people decided to go in for GM cotton, then they bought into the dream that I'm going to be able to invest far lesser and make far much more. What they were not told was that it would also lead to the uh, a sort of a extra cost in terms of um, amount of pesticide and the amount of fertilizer that will be needed because this is this kind of a crop. So this was not told to them. For some farmers, BT cotton has been a life-changing technology. Many cotton growers attended local demonstrations and could afford to replicate these optimum conditions on their own land. Uh, 50 acres, 50 acres I have BT cotton. BT cotton is also grown here. Very pleased I am with, the, with this uh, crop. I am very pleased with this crop. Ramkrishna Patil studied agriculture and law before practicing at the High Court in Nagpur. He left all that behind to farm his own ancestral land here in Yavatmal. Patil explains his success in quintals, the standard measurement for cotton, where one Indian quintal is equal to 100 kilos. 
we have been benefited like anything. Our average before BT cotton was only uh, eight to ten quintals, but when BT cotton came, we, uh, we are uh, getting average more than fifteen quintals to twenty quintals. We are benefited. Definitely, BT cotton has changed my life. I have a car also now. I have a big bungalow by the BT cotton at Pandarkawada. I have one flat at Nagpur also due to cotton, BT cotton. I have, my economic standard has been changed already by the BT cotton. Lakshman Gonewa also farms his ancestral land. He left teaching when the arrival of the new cotton technology ignited his interest in agriculture. This former teacher believes that close attention to growing instructions is the key to success with BT cotton. Today, nearly 100% of cotton seeds in India contain the BT gene. This raises the issue of farmers' rights. Before BT, Indian farmers lost their seed sovereignty as a result of the changeover from traditional to hybrid seeds. Now, with the cotton market dominated by Monsanto's BT technology, farmers have further lost their power to choose. Vidarbha Janandolan Samithi is a local NGO that's responsible for providing support to farmers in Yabatmal district. The right to select seeds is an important part of the advocacy work carried out by volunteers in this region. जो लगाना चाहता था वो मार्केट से सीड्स लेता था अभी बीटी लाने से उसको मार्केट से कोई सीड्स मिल रहा नहीं है तो वो बीटी लेगा ये मोनोपोली है मैगो की मोनोपोली चल रही है या बोलगा टूब जो सीड्स है उन फसल उनके सीड्स निकल रहे नहीं है This perspective is shared by some local farmers who now have no choice but to buy seeds containing the BT gene the absence of non-BT seeds concerns other groups in India. Many scientists argue that it's impossible to gain an understanding about different technological aspects of a hybrid seed because only seeds with the BT gene exist. For example, if yields increase, is it because of Monsanto's bulgard, or could other advancing technologies contained in the same seed be responsible? According to scientist Srijit Mishra, this is significant, because researchers are unable to make comparisons in order to explore possible alternatives to the BT technology. What I'm saying is that as a scientist or as a researcher, the way it has come up, the technology has come up, we actually do not have any counterfactuals to help say that, okay, this much is because of the improvement in seed technology and this much is because of the improvement in the BT gene coming in. Scientists and academics have an established advisory role in India. These groups are often responsible for providing policy advice to the government. Here at Mumbai University, the head of extramural studies believes that India should be more inward looking when it comes to agricultural innovations. We do need good technologies, new technologies. I would prefer if they were developed here, but our governments are not putting enough money into research. So what we are doing is whatever is happening in the West, we are taking. But our own institutions have the potential to go into research, develop new crops, uh, variants. Uh, if that could happen, that would be really great. For now, cottonseed technology in India remains under Western control. There are around 300 varieties of hybrid seeds that contain the BT gene. 
A support industry includes companies like Central Biotech in Nagpur. These developers and producers of agricultural inputs are responsible for some of the pesticides and fertilizers that help supplement BT cotton technology. Seeds, fertilizers and pesticides are all sold from local seed shops. These agricultural suppliers play a pivotal role in most farmers' lives. Hmm. Has it been good for your business? Your business claim BT cotton as a as a businessman. Business is good. बीटी कॉटन के लिए हमारे लिए भी अच्छा है कल्टीवेटर के भी लिए अच्छा है कोई इसमें है कुछ कल्टीवेटर के जो है इसमें फॉलोअर के जो है ये बीटी कॉटन नहीं होना वो तो उसके नंबर ऑफ कल्टीवेटर का जो उसे सज है बहुत कम है पर उनको उनके ऐसे फीलिंग्स क्यों हैं जो कम लोग हैं हाँ तो हर हर फील्ड में रहते मैडम क्योंकि जो अच्छा और बुरे कर लोग तो रहते हैं For many small farmers in India, the only possible way to adopt BT cotton technology is with the help of a loan. Although the price of BT seeds has fallen due to government intervention, they still cost around two to three times more than old varieties. Farmers must also budget for the pesticides and fertilizers needed to maintain this crop. Anju and her family have defaulted at the bank. Their only option is to borrow from local moneylenders at high rates of interest. If a crop fails, they may be unable to meet their financial obligations. If you don't get the loan, then what will happen? If you don't get the loan, then the next year will be double. This is the work that I was saying, if you don't get the loan for one, two, three, three times, so what can they do? What is their pressure? They say that they come to their house every day, they don't have to do their work, they do their work, they don't have to 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 do their work. Financial planning isn't easy for cotton farmers in India. There are many risk factors. Disease is an ever-present hazard. On the day we filmed with Anju, part of her five-acre cotton crop had been destroyed by a pest attack the night before. BT cotton only protects against bollworm. Other pests must still be controlled with pesticides, including sucking pests that became a significant problem after BT cotton was introduced. Labour costs have been rising sharply in recent years. Farmers must be vigilant about the presence of counterfeit seeds on the market. Weather is perhaps the biggest risk. Bharti's family experienced serious problems when consecutive droughts resulted in a run of low BT cotton yields. The family's situation at that time illustrates the problems farmers encounter when they are unable to invest at key moments in the BT cotton growing cycle. ठीक है और उसमें कैसा दूसरी इनकम नहीं रहने की वजह से वो ज़्यादा ही टेंशन आता था समझो दूसरा व्यवसाय उसको साथ में रहा रही था तो खेती थोड़ी सी कम भी पकी रही थी तो अपने को दूसरे व्यवसाय का आर्थिक मदद अपने को रही थी थी वो एक हमको नहीं थी खास पॉइंट उसका था और दूसरी बात कैसा जब व्यवसाय खेती रहने की वजह से खेती में ही हमको लॉस हो रहा था तो हमारे पास ज़्यादा का पैसा नहीं आ रहा था कि अगले साल हम फिर से वो खेती तैयार कर सकें तो इसलिए फिर वो शाहूकारी कर्जा निकालते गए और हम खेती करते गए ये आस पर कि ये साल नहीं पकी तो अगले साल तो भी पकेंगी। The risks for farmers can increase further when they bring harvested cotton to local markets like this. The government fixes rates in line with the international markets. Those government rates can therefore fluctuate daily. The government offers a minimum support price but farmers often can't afford to wait for this payment to be made.
Mounting financial pressures can leave many small-scale farmers in a cycle of debt. Barty believes it was money problems after the failed cotton crops that led to the suicide of her husband, Pradeep. The question of who bears responsibility for India's farming crisis is both a national and international concern. Some blame Monsanto for introducing the BT technology to India in 2002. Others believe that government help for farmers has fallen away as a result of the liberalization that took place in India during the 1990s. At a time when farmers need to invest in a new technology, are they lacking the support to do so? Fundamentally, I feel the most important thing that has happened is that the government has stopped looking out for the Indian farmer. Because all along, this has been a welfare state, at least on paper. The state has kind of abdicated and allowed private players to come in without any safeguards and checks and balances in place. Isn't it true when you're going to introduce a costly technology which is going to give you good returns, you have to invest something. PT cotton is capital intensive, it requires more money, it might be giving you more money. But that initial investment has to be made by somebody. The state is not forthcoming. The debate between different agencies about India's farming crisis reflects a clash of interests in India today. They were given a wrong technology in a wrong environment and they were losing the money and the reason behind the, their economic losses are the technology given to them. The farmer who is killing themselves is a victim of this modern uh, technology. What I say is that suicides existed. If BT as a technology came in to reduce this, it has failed. I can even put a stronger claim saying that perhaps this new technology even has added to the risk. If I want to interpret in a sociological context, is a call for help. Is a call that we are helpless, we are not able to do anything. This has made headlines around the world. How does Monsanto cope with that sort of publicity? Well, so it's a challenging thing because I, 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 the way I believe is that I think there are facts, right? Today, if 95% of the farmers continue to choose the seed, which contains a technology that tells the story. India is now the world's second largest cotton producer, but it's hard to measure the real impact of BT cotton. The government is currently assessing the benefits and drawbacks of this GM technology in a bid to evaluate its impact on millions of cotton growers throughout India. Can you give us a technology which will make it cheaper for the farmer? And that, that's the point. Nothing profound, they're eating and living. <laughs> 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 <laughs>